Um, so this question might be a pursuit that isn't worthwhile, but I thought it'd be interesting to ask because I think if theists are watching, it'd be quite um, quite an interesting one that they probably do pit these two things again. So, so the question is, can existential solace, which is the sort of initial question that we looked at in theistic beliefs, be pitted against atheism's explanatory breadth and depth? And is it even a worthwhile pursuit? So say, for instance, I'll put it in other terms, say, for instance, you you, you read that book, Graham, and you turn around and you, or somebody reads your book, turns around and, and is is like, okay, well, actually, I think, you know, on, on the whole, given all the evidence that it's more likely that theism is true, so, that's uh, right, atheism is true, um, but at the same time, there is this desire for existential solace. Is there any way to look at the two side by side and to come to the concluding argument that actually it is worth not seeking existential solace and actually agreeing that the evidence strongly supports or is more likely to include atheism? Or is that just a pursuit that is not worthwhile whatsoever? So I think there's a serious problem if there's a conflict between um, how you'd like things to be and how they are of that kind, the kind that you're imagining. So, so on the one hand, you think, there's no God, but on the other hand, you think, I really wish there was. I really want to have an afterlife. Uh, but it's not clear that there's a good, if, if, if you're in that position, it's not clear what to advise, I don't think. Um, and you can't just directly revise your beliefs in the light of your wishes, right? Uh, that's you just can't do that. But equally, you might find it impossible to revise your wishes in a lot of your beliefs too. Um, you might, so I'm, so, so I think that that's, if, if you're in that position, you, you have a dilemma and it's not clear that there's a really, there's really good advice to give you about how to deal with it. Um, and there are certainly historical models of people so I mentioned Hume before, and I, I, I often come back to this. And it's he, people, people like Johnson, his contemporaries, found him totally surprising because they were all sure that if you were an atheist, when it came time to die, you would repent. You would, you would start right. And Hume was just positively cheerful and not. Um, and they all, they, they were all around. They knew that this was the case. And it shocked them deeply. Uh, you can end up with um, not wanting to live forever. You can be quite happy with the idea that you get, you know, three score and ten, maybe, maybe a bit more, maybe a bit less, unless you're really unlucky these days. Um, and not think that that's disappointing, right? Um, but there's, I don't think there's a recipe for you know, ad, acquiring the kind of Hume-like dispositions. Right? So, I mean, I guess that's a very kind of unsatisfactory response right, to your question. I don't think that there's, a, there's an easy solution if, you, if there's a mismatch. Yeah, I mean between your between your beliefs, how, between how you think they are and how you think they you want them to be when you've got no control mm. over making it things how you want them to be. Yeah, I think this is a space actually that a lot of people find themselves in. It's it's interesting, um, especially my my old show. This was the space that we kind of investigated tons, and people found quite um, I don't know destroying really, kind of almost, and to their sort of kind of peace of mind. Um, so yeah, I think this is it's a space that's well worth exploring in, 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 in due course myself further for sure. If you enjoyed this clip, then head on over to Locals to access the full conversation right now. Supporters can access the video version and everyone can access the audio only version of the conversation. I'll see you over there. Thank you.